Hey traders, it's Red Ben here to teach you a simple yet effective strategy. I am showing you this not only to have an idea of how you might want to learn to trade, but also so you can learn how to build an effective strategy yourself. Um, before we start though, of course we have the required legal risk disclaimer. Please read, it basically says that I'm not licensed to give you any investment advice and that anything in this video or anything that I say should not be taken uh, as advice and that you should always consider the fact that you could lose a lot of money trading stocks, futures, cryptocurrencies, currencies, um, even more than you have in your account. So um, know what you're doing and recognize that this video is just for education purposes. Um, so there are two components to this simple yet effective strategy. Um, and the first one is Heikinashi candles. So Heikinashi candles are a non-standard candlestick chart that will show uh, momentum and trend direction. And it does this by looking at average movement in each time period. So there are some things that are significantly different than a traditional candlestick chart. We're gonna start with the things that are the same. The high and the low of the Heikinashi candle is exactly the same as a standard candlestick chart. So the high and the low will be the range that uh, tra the, the market traveled during the time period. The high is the highest price in the time period. The low will be the lowest price in the time period. The open and the close, however, are different than a standard candlestick chart. The open is at the midpoint of the previous bar. No matter where the period actually opened, the open of the Heikinashi candlestick will be the midpoint of the previous bar. I'll explain why this is helpful in a minute. And then the close is going to be the average price of the current bar. So again, it's not where the auction ended at the end of the period like a traditional candlestick. Instead, it's the average price of all participants who took part during that period. Okay, so when you are reading Heikinashi candles, what you are looking for in general uh, is to determine if you are trending or not trending, or like in a rotational or resting uh, st state. So. The first thing we need to do, because this strategy is a momentum strategy that requires some degree of trend and momentum, uh, we need to be able to identify what trending conditions look like with Heikinashi candlesticks. So anyone who's not familiar at all and has never seen a Heikinashi candlestick uh, chart may want to take some extra time to pause and really soak in some of this information on the next few slides. Um, if you already know about Heikinashi candles, then this is going to be a good review. Now, understand that you do not have to be an expert at Heikinashi candlesticks reading to, uh, to understand this strategy. You just need to be able to recognize a single pattern. Um, but I think it's important to understand a little bit about what you're looking at. So um, an example of trending conditions would be uh, large-bodied candles with either a shaved top for a red bearish candle or a shaved bottom for a green bullish candle that occur in sequence consecutively. So one after the other after the other. Um, that happens during trends. Um, basically what we're seeing with, for instance, a shaved bottom green candle is that the market is unable to push back behind the midpoint of the previous candle because there's no wick in the opposite direction of the trend. So like I said, it's helpful that all of the Heikinashi candles open at the previous candle's midpoint because when you see these shaved bottom green candles or shaved top red candles, which your eye picks up very quickly with just a little bit of practice, you can notice where the market is unable to push in the opposite direction. Super powerful. Um, so the larger the body of the candle, the stronger the momentum in general. Um, and now this is especially true when there is a wick on either side and the, um, the body is larger than the wick. 
then the by far the larger the body, the stronger the momentum. If there's a huge wick, um, you have to be a little bit cautious. Um, so generally increasing relative volume from one candle to the next candle and bodies that are larger than their wicks will make trend momentum that traps traders on the wrong side of the trend. So this is the alpha basically of this strategy is understanding this concept that when you have a trend and when you have identified a trend by finding consecutive shaved bottom green candles with larger bodies than their wicks, that momentum will trap traders on the other side, or in other words, bearish traders. So really under important key point there. Okay. Um, this is just a reminder that volume uh, is a measure of effort and the range of a candle is the results of that effort. So you need to see results if you're going to put in effort because otherwise traders will not follow through. Um, so if you want your trend to continue or if you expect your trend to continue, you should see volume increasing and range increasing. Uh, if that's not the case, you need to reevaluate. You should also be looking at support and resistance, just the traditional technical analysis, all of that still applies. I would not use diagonal uh, trend lines for Heikinashi. I'm not saying it can't work, but it's not traditionally the way you do it. Um, I'm not a huge fan of diagonal trend lines anyway. Um, I think horizontal support resistance is honestly all you need when it comes to TA. Um, so you want to look at whether or not price is breaking above resistance and if it closes below it, for instance. Again, that's not the last trade in the, in the period that's causing that close. It's the average trade in that period. So that tells you uh, something totally different than a traditional candlestick. So let's look at some examples of what Heikinashi candlestick charts look like. So here we have consecutive, one after the other, green shaved bottom candles. This is a bullish trend, huge bullish momentum here. And notice that the range of these candles increases over time. Every candle goes a little higher than the next one. When that changes, when you get inside candles or lower highs with higher lows, you're going to have a period of rest, maybe another extension. Here's another one. Okay, big candle, big body, kind of a big wick. Okay, candle, small wick, you're still going up. Note what's happening here. The, the bodies and the wicks are, the bodies are getting smaller, but the wicks aren't. And take a look at volume. Volume is now decreasing after spiking near the end. That is not a, that's not a trend that's probably going to continue much longer. Um, whereas if you have something like this, volume increasing as you go higher, you probably, now again, the bodies get small, so you're gonna get a pullback but the chances that this continues bullish, uh, there's a much higher chance than this because here you had a volume spike at the end, followed by another candle with lower volume. Here you had you know building volume, building volume. The only low volume candle was actually an inside candle. So all you got to do is break this resistance, and boom, you go. Very clear on a Heikinashi candle um, stick pattern uh, chart. So that's uh, that's an example of bullish momentum here and here. Um, this is more like rest. Then we've got some bearish examples. So here we've got multiple shaved top bearish candles in a row. You get a impulse move lower. Same thing here, shaved top red candles, impulse move lower. Same thing here. Take a look at the volume. Where's the volume spike? It's hard to see here because it's on top of it, but this has very high volume and a huge lower wick, right? That is um, exhaustion. Just like a traditional candlestick chart, this is an example of bears getting way stuck too low. The average trader in this period entered here and somebody, a whole lot of them actually, 
traded down here and probably we're selling because it's below support. See that? So it broke support, but most of the traders were actually trading up here. Does it immediately go higher? No, it's got to, it's got to negotiate a bit, right? They got to trap some more people. It's not, it's not obvious um, to most people where it's going. So they're still going to work it out and try to push it lower. They give one more push, but take a look at this push, lower volume, right? And, and we don't even have two consecutive shave top candles. So, Right away from the Heikinashi candlestick pattern, uh, 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 candlestick chart alone, you can see that this is probably not going to make an impulse move, whereas this is going to create an impulse move. You get a move up, impulse move up, increase in volume, beautiful move up, right? Now we know our support's down here, pulls back on lower volume. Guess where it's going? Higher. Okay, so even though this is example of bearish momentum, of course, anywhere you can go in either direction. Uh, this one happened to be a bearish chart on the uh, higher time frame, um, and that that does matter. You should always know what your uh, higher time frame chart is doing. So, um, consolidation and trend changes with Heikinashi. Uh, so, these are just some examples of things to watch for when you are trading with Heikinashi candlesticks. Um, we already talked a little bit about them. What I would recommend is actually to pause the video here if you are not familiar with Heikinashi um, or just take a screenshot of this because it'll start to make more sense as we look at more examples. Um, but the basic idea is that we want to watch for very large wicks or wicks that are um, uneven. So a big lower wick, small higher wick. Um, also candle bodies that are very small um, with wicks on both ends generally like indecision or the market's resting um, and then engulfing candles or any candle where the wick pushes above resistance and that resistance might be the previous candles high or a um, resistance line that you drew on a higher time frame um, those are really important to watch for as well because they can produce traps and getting behind trap traders is how you find good entries so some examples of a non-trending Heikinashi chart. So um, this is uh, crude oil futures. This was during a period of time when we didn't really have much of a trend. Um, the higher time frame trend was bullish, but there this was a rest in that period. So or in a, in a zoomed in uh, 15 minute uh, candles. So you've got going both directions here, followed by uh, some rest, right? So those small bodied candles, wicks on both sides, probably resting. Here's another one, some indecision or some rest, um, indecision and rest. So those are important spots to um, be aware of what's going on on higher time frames and make sure you know where your stop loss is going to be, how to manage risk uh, when you see things like this. Um, then you've also got engulfing candles. So these, the high and the low, go beyond the uh, previous candles high and low. So here's another one. They don't have to be large. Um, they're more powerful if they're large, but uh, you've got a low here that's lower than this candle and a high that is higher by like one tick than this candle. The idea with these, as well as your traditional trap candles, which is where you trade beyond resistance or support, but yet close uh, uh, on the other on, on the other side of it. So most traders, the average trader is getting in here near the midpoint of the previous candle. That's why the candle body is small because the open is always the medium, the midpoint of the previous candle. If the close is near there, it means most people got in right near the midpoint of the previous period, right? So in this case, a lot of people, I say a lot because it's got a big volume, right? You always want to look at volume. Um, a lot of people got in above resistance, probably on a breakout um, of this indecision, thinking that we've got impulse move, rest, impulse move coming. Makes sense if you're on a bullish chart. In this case, that didn't happen, right? We got a red candle with a shaved top to follow it. Do you want to be long in this situation? No, you do not. You do not want to be with the trap traders. Um, now, will this... Uh, strategy I'm about to teach you, get you in right here? No, it, it, it won't. But if you can read the candlesticks and you know that this is a good opportunity to add to a trade, uh, you know, be, feel free to do it. 
So uh, that's that. Haikanashi candles, very important first component of two in this strategy. The second of two components, um, and like I said, it's pretty simple, is a moving average cloud. So this is just an indicator that's built by putting together two moving averages, one that's faster, in this case, it's the green one, the green line, and one that's slower, in this case, it's the red line, and then shading all the space in between them. Now you'll see that this trading view indicator changes, you have the ability to change the colors uh, to know when the moving averages cross. So when it's a red cloud, it means the slower, longer moving average is higher than the faster or shorter moving average. When it's a green cloud, the faster moving average is above the slower moving average. So that is helpful for quickly looking at a chart and being like, oh, yeah, mostly bullish here. Uh, do you need it for the strategy? No, we're not necessarily going to make a huge deal about what color the, the, the cloud is. That's, that's not what we're looking at. Um, we are actually using the cloud to identify opportunities to enter a trade. So places like this is actually a good entry for a bullish trade. Um, assuming you know that you are going in a bullish direction. Um, here's another one. So that's what we're actually using it for. Um, how to set up your moving average cloud. The truth is any settings will work sometimes, and there is no perfect setting that will work all the time. Very important to understand. Spending too much time exploring all the different possible ex uh, combinations is a waste of time. Um, I've done it. I've been there. I've played with this for years, uh, tried all sorts of different types of moving averages, uh, different mathematical formulas to figure out which lengths to do. Just pick one. Uh, that's that's my recommendation. Just, just pick one. Um, for the faster moving averages, I stick with an exponential, a triple exponential, or a volume weighted moving average. Um, the, sing uh, the simple moving averages are just a little bit too laggy for me. Um, I really like volume weighted uh, moving averages because you end up getting more entry opportunities than the straight exponential. Um, the, the triple exponential will give you even more entries than that, but your win rate might start to decrease because you're going to get some entries that maybe shouldn't be entries. But if you're finding that you are not getting the entries you want, or maybe you're trading a really high time frame like the weekly, uh, Tima might make sense. So like I said, it's just going to depend on your situation, what you're trading um, and how often you want to trade. Now for the long moving average or the slow moving average, I highly prefer the Hull moving average. Okay. But there's one rule that Blair Hull, the creator of the Hull moving average does have, and that's that the length that you use should be square rootable. So for instance, rather than using 50, you should use 49 because 49 has a whole number uh, for its square root. Um, the reasoning for this has to do with the mathematical formula that uh, creates like the practically lagless moving average that a hull MA is. Um, it doesn't mean it won't work with a 50, right? You're not gonna, not gonna, it's not gonna break. It doesn't not work. It's just that traditionally the hull MAs that are used are, are these 25, 36, 49, 64. Um, you can use whatever you want, but uh, I personally like 49 um, haul moving average and nine volume weighted moving average. If you're on TradingView, this is not my indicator and I'm not at all affiliated with them, but if you look up best cloud all MA, in other words, all types of MA, um, that's my personal favorite MA cloud indicator. It's a very easy indicator to build. Um, as I said, you just plop two indicators on there and tell it to fill in space. So if you know a little bit of coding, you could probably make your own. Um, otherwise, uh, go on TradingView and look, do a search in the public library for this, and you'll find it. It has all sorts of options beyond this. You can try every kind of moving average you want uh, on any uh, time frame you want. So that is how we're going to find our ideal entries. So our simple strategy has two conditions that we need to meet before we can take a trade. There's a signal and a trigger. 
All right, so the signal will alert you to the trend direction and the fact that momentum is increasing. It's important to remember that the bullish and bearish signals, as well as the triggers, are conceptually totally the same. They're just the inverse of each other. So I'm going to talk a lot about the bullish setups, but realize that the bearish setups are just the same exact thing uh, inversed, right? Uh, so it's important to understand that the signal has to occur before the trigger for the trigger uh, to be a valid trade entry. Uh, super important, because otherwise you're going to be taking all sorts of trades that lose. Um, you're still going to get losing trades doing it this way, but you should have less losing trades if you wait for the signal first and then a trigger in the same direction as the signal. Okay, you can't, uh, ha if you have a bearish signal and you are waiting for a bearish trigger to sell, you can't get a bearish signal and then see a bullish trigger and buy. It doesn't work like that. First, you need to get, if you have a bearish signal, you need to get a bullish signal before you can consider looking for a bullish trigger. Otherwise, the bullish trigger is not valid. So very, very important. You must keep track of what your most recent signal was. Was it bearish or bullish? And then you're only looking for triggers that match that direction. The trigger is your strategic trade entry. This is actually what triggers the trade execution. And again, it's only valid if it's following a signal in the same direction. Generally, the uh, sooner the trigger happens following the signal, the more likely the trade is going to work out. Again, it's not a guarantee that the trade will work, but if you got a bullish signal here and the auction moves higher and you did not get a trigger to get in long, then it goes back down and it yet again does not give you a trigger to get long and then it goes lower and then it starts to come up and you get a bullish trigger. Um, you got your signal way back here and now you're getting your trigger way over here it's probably not valid anymore you probably just missed a short signal in there somewhere most likely um or you're just on a on a chart that's not trending or on a uh, time frame that's not trending so generally you want it pretty quickly you'll get a feel for this once we look at some examples um the signal to prepare for a trade uh, for this simple strategy is to have two or more shaved bottom green candles, one right after the other, where the second shaved bottom candle has more volume than the first one. That's your bullish entry rule. So two or more consecutive shaved bottom green candles with increasing relative volume to the second candle from the first one. Uh, again, the signal will alert you to the direction and the fact that we are building momentum. When you have a series of uh, shaved bottom candles, in this case, we are only looking at the first two of the series. Okay, if you get if you if you don't have a valid signal in those first two, in other words, the second one doesn't have increasing volume. You can't just go to the next one and say, "Oh, this one's got more volume, so that's a signal." No, in that case, you'd have to wait for a new candle with a wick, and then another first uh, shave bottom green candle, and then a second shave bottom green candle. There's one exception to this, which we'll talk about in a minute, and that has to do with inside candles. But in general, we're gonna we're just gonna follow this rule and you'll find most of the trades. So again, this is one of those things that visually it starts to make sense once you've seen it. Um, it's a little hard to talk about without, without looking at it. So let's look at a chart here. We've got a um, green shave bottom candle. This previous candle had a wick. It's kind of hard to see, but there's a tiny little wick there, I believe. Um, well, it wouldn't matter even if it wasn't. Let's say it's not, because I don't actually see one. Uh, eyes aren't that great anymore, but let's say it's not, does not have a wick. Um, so that's your first green shave bottom candle, that tiny, tiny candle right there. So then we are looking at this shave bottom candle, which is the second consecutive shave bottom candle. We now go back, and again, there's no, this is a red candle, right? So this is this candle. This little shave bottom candle would be this volume, and this second shave bottom candle would be this volume. Since the second volume is bigger than the first shave bottom green candle, 
this is a valid signal. Okay, we're not yet triggered in the trade, but we know at this point, way down here, that we are looking at a bullish, looking for a bullish entry. Um, this is an example of a invalid signal. Note here, the last wick is way back here. Okay, and then we have a series of green shave bottom candles, but volume decreases. Now here you've got volume increasing, but you need to look and check out this previous candle where the volume is high. It's a shave bottom candle. So therefore this is your third shave bottom candle in a row. And unless the second one is an inside candle, you can't take that as being bullish. And as you can see in this case, it made a pretty significant retracement after that. Here's another. So you've got, um, let's see, a again, hard to tell where the wick is. There's clearly a wick here. Um, I'm pointing to this one, so there might be a wick on this one too, but you're basically just looking for two, the first two consecutive candles where, let's see, one, so here's, this is green, this is number two green candle, number three green candle. Number one is a wick, number two is a shave bottom, and then this is your signal candle right here. So it's a bigger volume than the previous one, and these are both shave bottom candles. Hopefully that's starting to make sense and you get a lift. Same thing here. This one's really easy to see because there's no green cloud behind us. So we've got a wick here on this green candle. That's this one. Then we've got two shave candles in a row. They're both green. So it's this one and this one. So this volume is bigger than this volume. Therefore we have increasing volume with two consecutive green sh shave bottom candles and you get a lift. Okay, uh, ignore this one. We're going to talk about that one later. Um, these are just some examples of ones that didn't work out because volume is decreasing. Um, here's another traditional one. So you've got a uh, shave bottom candle here following a red candle with a wick. So a red candle with a wick, shave bottom candle. If you get another shave bottom candle with higher volume, it is a valid signal. Okay, and then finally we got this one. So um, this one, I don't think that has a wick, but this one clearly does. So let's say the red is the last wick here, and then we've got the first shave bottom candle. Second shave bottom candle has higher uh, relative volume. It's bullish, okay? Um, now, there is one exception, and that is when the second candle body is an inside candle and is smaller than the first candle. In that case, uh, you're not gonna get a lot of volume on that candle. And that makes sense because you've got less range. So you should have less effort when you have less range, right? So in that case, when that second shave bottom candle is an inside candle, we're now going to look to the next candle, the third consecutive shaved bottom candle. It's a, If it's a shave bottom candle and it has more volume than the very first one and it broke resistance, that is a valid entry as well. So I've got an example of this, like blown up real nice and big. So this is on the one hour chart. So we've got a candle with a wick is right here. The first candle with a shaved bottom that's green is here. Okay. Now we look at the next candle. It's got a shaved bottom, but it doesn't have enough volume because it's not above this volume. But wait, it's an inside candle. The high and the low are inside the range of this first shaved bottom candle. Ah, so... What does that mean? It means range didn't increase. We need to wait for a candle that breaks over this, could be the next one, could be the fourth one, um, that does not trade below the midpoint of it, okay? So generally, shade bottom is best, or maybe at least it does not trade below the low of this one, and it breaks over resistance. Now here, you got a great example because you actually had previous resistance way up here and this very next candle not only breaks this resistance, but it breaks above this one too. And it has more volume than the first candle. And it did not trade below the midpoint, sorry, the midpoint of the first candle. Okay. So this is a valid signal. Now, here's the tricky part. When you're using this exception and you see this, it is a valid signal, but you're not going to get a valid trigger on this time frame. It's going to go too fast because this is a breakout. It's no longer, uh, you're not going to get a great, you shouldn't have a great pullback here. Um, so you could just buy it 
uh, or we're going to talk about another way to find a uh, the trigger uh, in this exception. So let's talk about the second condition, which is the trigger. Again, the trigger is the trade execution point. Um, and for this strategy, what we are looking for is, again, after a signal in the same direction, if uh, so if we have a bullish signal first, if the auction then trades back uh, to the moving average cloud from above, that is our trigger. So we are looking for entries on pullbacks to get better risk reward ratios than buying breakouts. Um, so a pullback into the top of the cloud from above that does not break below the cloud bottom is your best valid trigger. It's even better if you can close the candle above the cloud, but it's not necessary for that. Um, now, if the uh, market moves below the cloud um, after you know, trading down into it, but then closes back inside the cloud, you might want to uh, wait a little bit and make sure that you're going in the right direction. Because sometimes that's a sign that your momentum is not so strong. Um, you could aggressively enter if you want to, or wait for the uh, auction to like either close a candle or at least break the top of the cloud again. Um, that might make sense. Uh, now, if you got the alternative, if you use the alternative inside candle exception, what you need to do to find your trigger is actually zoom in uh, to a faster time frame. Then you can look for the trigger of pulling back into the moving average. Um, so let's look at some examples. We're going to actually go pull up the same exact chart that we had before with these signals marked with green. This time we're going to look at uh, the yellow arrows, which are the triggers. So here we have a signal, increasing volume, second shave bottom candle. You know, we break out, we pull back into the cloud. There's your entry, goes higher, okay? Does it mean that we're going to go higher forever? No. <laughs> this is only looking at the hour chart, right? If you want to know whether or not it's going to go higher longer term, you need to find a signal and a trigger on a higher time frame chart. Um, and that's something a lot of people don't understand. Uh, but if you do get it, you will do much better in the markets because if you understand that you're only looking at this one momentum move, this, this one impulse move is what you're getting from this signal and entry. Signal and trigger gets you this. You, the fact that you got this has nothing to do with this signal and entry. It's actually just because you got another signal and trigger later on, two or three of them. Okay, so here is our next trigger. But again, we're looking at bullish right now. Uh, it's too confusing if we go back and forth. We'll look at bearish a little bit later. But note, we got the signal and then it pulled back into the MA, did not close below it. Clearly a trigger to buy and it goes higher. Okay. Signal here, pulls back into the uh, into the cloud. That's your entry, goes higher. Um, this is a alternative signal. Um, what happened here is we broke resistance. And then at that point, you can technically start counting um, shave bottom candles and get a second one in a row that goes higher. And that's a valid signal too, because it's basically it's an inside candle on a higher time frame. If that doesn't make sense, just, just ignore it. Don't worry about it. But if you break resistance, you can start your count over again, uh, looking for two consecutive shave bottom candles. Just happens to work. Uh, and in this case, you still have to wait for a trigger, of course, which is right here. You can see it comes back. It tests that nine volume weighted moving average almost to the tick. And you get another push. <laughs> Does it mean it's going to go high? No. In fact, this time it has to come all the way back and test this high uh, volume. See all this volume here? So it's, it's testing this. It's making sure that there's still buyers here because it went up on um, impulse. So this has a lot of momentum. And so when the auction gets tired and it's not sure what to do, the natural thing to do is to come back where all the volume was, which is here. And when you can't break the support, guess what? Bullish signal, bullish trigger. Uh-oh, stopped out if you used a real tight stop. That's okay. Right? Stops happen every single, every single setup, every strategy has stops. If anyone tells you that they have a hundred percent win rate, um, you can probably fade them. <laughs> uh, so yeah, there, there are certainly stops here. Um, but here is a signal for bullish trade 
comes back into the um, the cloud. This one's a little tricky to, to catch because it's a shaved bottom candle. It just happens to just sit right on the cloud. I will say, if you're not using a volume weighted moving average, if you're using an EMA here, you don't get this. You don't, you don't get this. And what it, the reason you get it is because of this increased volume in here. Um, it pulls that volume weighted moving average a little higher and gets you that entry. Nothing else you could get in here. It's still not too late, right? It hasn't been that long since the signal. Um, so those are some examples of traditional triggers and um, some more advanced triggers. Let's look at that exception trigger, specific inside candle exception. This is the exact same chart um, as this one, only this is the 60 minute ES chart. And this one is the 30 minute ES chart. So remember on the 60 minute chart, we had an inside candle, but then the very next candle was a shave bottom that broke over resistance. And I said that you could that, that that would be a valid signal, but to find the trigger, you'd need to zoom in. Okay, well, when you zoom in, what you see is the break over resistance and then ta-da, a pullback into the 30 minute MA cloud. Crazy, right? Isn't that cool? Now, here's the other thing. If you were watching the 30 minute chart the whole time, you would have actually gotten a normal valid signal. Here's a wick. Here's a shave bottom green candle. Second shave bottom green candle in a row has higher volume. <gasps> it happened on the exact same candle. What? Yeah, that's how it works. Pretty neat. Um, so there's your entry. If you're late, you can just take this candle. Ta-da, right? So um, let's see, managing risk. This is uh, super important, okay? We don't just want, nobody knows what's gonna happen next. You can be 99.9% .9 sure what's going to happen based on your back testing and you know uh, great ideas, technical analysis patterns. Nobody knows 100% what's going to happen. <laughs> Honestly, no one knows 99% either. Uh, most people have about a 60% chance um, if it's a really good strategy. So uh, because of that, we need to manage risk. And to manage risk, you need to know where to put your stop loss, where which is basically an automatic exit to get out of a trade that is clearly not working. Um, how you place your stop loss is up to you. I'm going to share how I place my stop losses with the hope that you guys don't all front run me. Um, <laughs> I, I should make very clear here that um, personally, I am not using this uh, this setup, this strategy to trade futures. I know a lot of these examples are with futures charts because I primarily do trade futures. This is a strategy that I used to trade with uh, stocks and options. Um, it also works wonderfully with cryptocurrencies. Um, the problem with trading futures with this strategy is that your initial stop loss needs to be pretty deep for this to work. It's your kind of like your typical momentum strategy where you need to put stops underneath support. Um, you can't trade ES that way you will absolutely explode accounts over and over and over again if you do not have a precise entry and stop. Um, I, like I said, when I'm trading futures, I'm trading in a with, with other professionals in the trade and perform room. We're using an algorithm that helps us find the precise entries that we want to take. It tells us exactly where the stops are supposed to go and it's back tested. We, you know, we know how much we're going to risk on every trade and it's four or five points max most of the time on ES. This system will not, most of the time, give you a four point stop. It'll give you a 40 point stop, um, which again, might be fine if you're trading equities or a small options account. Um, and now that stop will eventually trail, but if you're wrong a few times in a row on a 40 point loss and you're trading futures, it, you're not going to last, right? But if you're trading cryptocurrencies, you can just get a smaller amount. So I talk about here um, using the R, which is a predetermined constant risk per trade. Uh, it's a pretty simple strategy for figuring out how many shares to purchase um, to risk the same amount on every trade. That is how I uh, initially learned to trade. And it's a great way to trade uh, in general, um, especially if you're relatively new or you're just you don't have a clear strategy for how to uh, take profits and re-enter trades and add to trades, 
start here. Risk the same on every trade. And if $1,000 would cause you stress to lose it on every trade, single trade, if, you, if you're down three trades in a row, which is totally normal, you're down three grand and you're freaking out because like you can't pay bills, your R is too big. <laughs> start with a start with a fifty dollar R if you need to, right? Like build confidence, and uh, then you can always increase your R once you're actually trading well. The the amount this amount does not matter, and the great thing is that uh, the the actual trade strategy stays the same regardless of what whether or not you're risking fifty or five hundred or fifty thousand every trade. Um, so it's always the same. And that's what I prefer is to use a simple, straightforward, mathematical way to decide how much to risk on every trade. So, um, when it comes to finding a, uh, a place to put your stop, if you haven't read this already, basically what it says is you put it under a previous support. Okay. You're specifically looking if possible for a previous resistance that has been retested as support. So you see here, market came up, made a high, market came down, couldn't go much lower, market came back up through that high, retested the high from above and went higher. Once you see this retest here, see that, how close that, doesn't have to be to the tick, but in the, in the general realm of this range has been tested, any new tests near that range like this are great places to put your stop below it. Don't, don't put it on it, put it below it. If you want to put it down here, you will very rarely lose. Um, if you put it here, you will occasionally lose. If you put it here, you might lose a lot. And if you put it here, you're going to lose all the time. <laughs> so it, that's the thing. You got to think about where you have last seen the market rotate. And so buyers, I'm sorry, sellers uh, controlled here. Buyers took over. They came back to test. Buyers continued to hold. They came back to test. Buyers continued to hold. They came back to test. They got through this area. Guess what? This one held. Buyers are clearly in control here. When you get a signal and then you wait for your trigger, which is here when it gets into the MA, your stop has to go back here, okay? If you're if you're trading ES, that is not acceptable. Not acceptable. Don't do it. Don't trade ES with a stop like that. I'm using ES because these are the charts I actually look at. But uh, what you could do, what I do, if I still see this, is I will go ahead and do my risk uh, assessment to figure out how much uh, I can purchase and then get perhaps 100 share, shares of SPY or one options contract, one call for SPY, let's say, if I had a risk this big. Maybe I can swing one or two option contracts and not risk too much. But I'm not buying futures contracts, not even MES, with this kind of risk. No way, way too much. Because when you're wrong, it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to blow up. You can only take a few of these. <laughs> it's just, it's too much, right? Too much risk. But if you're trading options or you're trading shares or you're trading cryptocurrencies where you can buy minuscule amounts and risk way less than 50 points, a, a, you know, a point, $50 a point, um, it, it, can, it can work. But it will not work on something like futures. It's just too leveraged. Um, so uh, anyway, here's your trigger. In this case, notice you do trade below your trigger but then it continues higher. So if you put your risk here, it works. Um, the good news is you don't have to keep your risk here very long. If your trade starts to work, you can trail your stop. And you should, in my opinion. I certainly do trail my stop as it works because you're looking at momentum. We're trading a trend following strategy. So let's follow this trade real quick. Remember this was previous uh, highs that have already been retested. We backed into it and we put our stop under here because we got our signal and our trigger, right? We just looked at this on the previous slide. So we trade lower than our entry. So we're losing money for a moment here. Then we trade higher. Note here we have two consecutive shaved bottom candles. Hard to see, but they are increasing volume here. The first green candle is a wick, a doji candle, the wick on both sides. And then you've got two consecutive shaved bottom candles with increasing volume. So there is your bullish signal. Guess what? You can move your stop. 
because you've had a bullish signal. The momentum continues to be bullish. You should not be pulling out. The market should not be pulling back through that recent pullback. This new pullback now becomes your stop, your, your support. You put your stop loss below that, right? So it comes back. We're not worried about finding the trigger right now because we're already in the trade. I just want to show you how you drill stop. So here, here's a new bullish signal, increasing volume to consecutive shaved bottom green candles. You find the support below it and you put your stop there. Hey, look, our stop is almost at break even. We All right, we go higher, get two consecutive green shaved bottom candles on increasing volume. Guess what? Trail stop to the support below it. Now we are in profit. How cool. We get a short signal to shave top candles with increasing volume. Guess what? Our trail, our stop is trailing, right? We want to get a tight stop. And so as close as we can to this. Now, could you technically put it here? I mean, I'd probably wait until they break over this and I get another bullish signal here. Now this one was invalid. Note here we got a, uh, a lower volume. If you want to, and if you want, especially if you don't like the idea of keeping this risk really big, you can trail your stop even if the volume decreases. As long as you get two shaved bottom candles. Um, so like here, for instance, two shaved bottom candles, even though volume is decreasing, what that's basically telling you is momentum might not be increasing. You might not get that much range. Guess what? Maybe you want to trail your stop, right? You don't want to enter. You don't want to see it as a signal to enter a new trade in the future. But if you want to use those two uh, shave bottom candles to basically tell you any support below, if we break it, we're, we're clearly weak. So if you wanted to, you could even trail your stop here as soon as you see that. And like I said, this same thing, two shave bottom candles, decreasing volume. So not that bullish. Huh. Trail your stop, right? Uh, that's what I personally do is if I'm watching a chart and I notice that I've had, am I, and I'm long and I notice I've had previously two consecutive shave bottom candles. I don't even care about the volume. If I'm not looking to add to the trade, um, I'm just trailing my stop and pretty soon your stop gets nice and tight. And, uh, when momentum, uh, settles down, you get trailed up. So, um, now what about adding to trades? When you're adding to a trade that you're already in, you must have a valid signal and a valid trigger uh, to enter. And I have an additional rule that I cannot risk more than one R, right? Thousand dollars on um, that trade. It's, so I'm not adding to the risk of the original trade. So uh, an example is given here where you, you're, in, you, you're getting in at 100, you've got your first stop 10 points lower, your risk is 1,000, so you can buy 100 shares on the first entry. Price then rises, giving you a new signal, um, and there's now a new pullback at support at 115. So if you get a trigger that fires at 125, right, you know your stop would be at 115, so now you can risk 10 points, but you've also trailed your first entry from 100, you've trailed it up to 115. So you can now do the math again and you'll get a total of 200 shares. Well, you already bought 100 of them, right? So I can now buy another 100 shares and my total risk on this is still $1,000 even if both of these trades basically fail. That's the way I think about it. I don't, psychologically, I have a really hard time getting in a trade, having it be uh, go to profit then add to that trade and have both of those go under. And now I've just lost two grand after adding to a winning trade. If you can handle it, do what we want. But this is what works for me. If I do this method and they both stop out and I just lose the initial thousand dollars, guess what? I'm on to the next trade. In, in, if I see another signal in the next uh, candle, I'm, I'm ready to hit the button. No stress. Zero. It's like I had a trade, I added to it, I lost, no big deal. But if I had a trade that was winning, I added to it, and now I lost two trades in a row, or all at once, 
uh, yeah, it's going to, a couple of those, it's going to mess up my day. So um, the other thing to watch for is engulfing candles. Engulfing candles, when we break beyond their range, um, can create traps. And those traps can create great spots to add if you already know which direction, or I shouldn't say no, if you already suspect that you know which direction the market's momentum is moving, which is what our signal in this strategy is all about. Okay, so um, quickly showing you some engulfing candles. So we've got bullish here, and then note uh, engulfing candle has a low lower than this low, and a high higher than this high. Once we break either below this or above this, in this case it's above, adding there makes sense for a scalp. Same thing here, higher high, lower low, you break underneath that, all of a sudden you've got a breakout trade. If you waited a little longer, you got a pullback trade. So again, this is not actually part of the strategy, but it's something to watch for if you want to add some uh, uh, spice to a very simple strategy. Um, I personally also set partial profit targets at resistance. I like to take some of my trade off as we cross resistance, usually a quarter, um, maybe a third, occasionally a half. Um, if it's if I know that the higher time frame is not cooperating with my direction, um, I'll take off a half at that resistance. Um, I've got some other things that I consider. Um, basically, these are all examples of weakness. So things like higher volume without higher prices, so effort without reward, or um, both moving averages falling, um, both moving averages no longer acting as support, right? The, all of these things are examples of weakness. So if I see those things, I'm looking for a chance to take profits, um, maybe not right away, I'm not gonna panic out of the trade, but if I get a spike after one of these things, yeah, I'm gonna take a third off. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna try to, especially if I've already hit my first target, I might not exit the trade if it looks like it might still work, uh, and I, I then I'll just leave my stop. But if I've already exited some and I've just got a runner, then I'm waiting to hit more profit targets and I start to see weakness. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll I'll pull some off. You know, um, here's some examples. So we had a bullish trigger or bullish signal, bullish trigger here when it pulled back to the MA, it moved up. The smaller body candles and they're above the cloud, consecutively above the cloud. Um, that right there is giving me some pause. These are inside candles, so of course they'd have lower volume. But once we break over this high, I'm going to take some profits. And when this breaks over the high, but it doesn't close over the high, I'm like, I'm ready to exit the majority of my position if we get another push. So here I'm out two thirds of it, right? And I'm just waiting for a runner to get taken out. I get an opportunity to trail my stop when I get two shade candles. So now my stop is in profit significantly, right? I'm just, Initial stop is under here. Um, again, if you had a stop like this, maybe you could use it on, on futures, but normally you don't get those. Um, so now here, same thing. Traded above resistance, couldn't close above resistance. Get out, right? Get some out. If you want to do it again here, great. Eventually you get trailed out. So that's the idea. Um, the bearish setup is the exact same. It's just inversed. Okay, so I explain here um, the signal and the trigger. It's the same exact thing. It's just the opposite. Um, and the rules are all the same. You can only take a bearish trigger if you've had a bearish signal recently, right? Um, and one thing to think about, uh, with bearish moves, they tend to happen a little bit more quickly. So if you miss that first entry, like you pull up the chart and, it, and you literally see that there was a bearish signal and a bearish entry in the very previous handle that you just looked at, if you can get in the range of that trigger candle, you can probably short. Um, the other thing is you can always zoom in to a faster time frame, and uh, you'll probably find a traditional entry there. So here is a bearish signal, second shave top candle, increasing volume, back tests the uh, cloud beautifully, and you get an extension. Same thing here, one, two, right? This one's got a wick. So first, second shave bottom candle has higher volume you're looking for a nice pullback. This one I would not take because it closed above the cloud. This one's perfect. Closed inside the cloud. I'd probably short right there. Boom. Now this big X is here because volume is decreasing, but why is volume decreasing? It's decreasing because we had an inside candle. Guess what? If you want to buy this breakdown or you want to, you know, uh, zoom in and find a, find a uh, good uh, trade on a, a faster time frame here. Cool. Short. Sure. 
second uh, shaved top candle on higher volume. Uh-oh, look at this volume compared to this volume. Extreme exponential difference, right? Huge spike compared to the rest. I don't short these ever. Uh, I assume that this is the end and I do not short them when they look like this, especially when the very next candle is red, but it can't get more volume. Volume. If I'm short here, I'm out completely. <laughs> On the, any, to any chance we go down, I'm out. Um, note here, we get a long signal and a long trigger, and it actually tells us to get long here. So if you did get short uh, here, you would probably get out. Also, if you saw the moving averages moving up together after this, um, yeah, just get out. So that is my strategy. Uh, I can do an additional video of some live trading with this strategy if you'd like. Um, unfortunately, TradingView does not allow back trading with Heikadashi candles. So I can't like pull up something from before, but we could pull up something more recent um, like a stock and uh, see if I can uh, work through some entries and exits and you guys can get a kind of feel for what the win rates are. What I would recommend is just watch this video again, take some notes, try it out with a paper account. I can't recommend that you trade real money. I'm not licensed to do so. Um, but I personally have traded this um, strategy for quite some time with crypto and stocks and options and have found it useful as long as you can read the, uh, the momentum. So if you understand the concepts and you know what the components are and you know what conditions to look for, you're confident about it, it is a useful strategy. But like I said, even if you don't like the strategy and you're like, I don't think that'll work, it's I don't I don't I don't like it for one reason or another, it's got too much risk, right? It's got a lot of, a lot, of a lot of drawbacks. At least by watching this, you can see what a good strategy looks like when it comes to finding the factors and finding the conditions for determining your direction and when you should get into the trade. If you know how to do that, you can build your own strategy. Just find something that works a lot um, and uh, with some back testing. Uh, and make sure that you have all those components there and that you know how to manage risk. That's the most important thing. So everybody trade safe. Thanks for checking this out. Um, if you want to follow me on Twitter, uh, please do, Red Ben Trader. Um, also, uh, if you found this on YouTube, please check me out on Twitter. If you found this on Twitter, check out Red Ben on YouTube. Uh, more videos to come, folks. Hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment, uh, leave a like, um, or tell me why it sucked. Thank you. Bye-bye.